Okay, good morning, and uh, let's, uh, okay, all right, let's uh, um, kind of go through what we've talked about last time. Um, we, we talked about uh, uh, input-output and how it works and all the uh, good stuff you can do with that, uh, which um, uh, brought us to the fact that uh, C in and C out are uh, good morning. C in and C out are actually um, objects made up of O stream and I stream. And we said that these uh, objects, uh, uh, they have an internal state that you can change because they have member functions and each member function can do certain thing before any input and output is supposed to happen. You can, uh, uh, for printing something using O stream objects like C out. And I'm going to tell you today that there are two more objects. Uh, it's not only C out. We have C out, we have C log, and we have C E R R, so which is C error. Uh, why we have these things? Uh, as, hello, good morning. Ah, okay. <laughs> good morning. So if I change the everything that I have done over here, so instead of C out, if I put C log, C log, and C log, the output would be, wouldn't be any different. This is from last, last week's uh, lecture that we have done on C in and C out. It's going to still work and run. Output's going to happen. You, you'll see everything's going to work the same thing. So what is the difference between C log, C error? It's just they are, they are all C in, C out. But what happens if something goes wrong with C out? We know it becomes disabled, right? We know that. Like C in, if something goes wrong, it goes into a failed state. You have to clear it and all the good stuff. If that's the case, how can you show an error message? Or how can you uh, log something? How can you, for those reasons, they created three categories of C out. So one is C out that is standard printing on console. The other one, if you, for example, want to do debugging and stuff, you print it on C log, and if anything erroneous happens, you print it on C error, okay? The good thing is that you can manually disable these things. So you can manually disable C log so your error messages won't appear anymore, and then you reactivate it and so on and so forth. So we have total of three things. So C log, so it's not only C out, remember? Three output things that you have. Let's put this back to C out. I'm just letting you know that there are three things that we have. Uh, C out, C log, and C error. Console out, console log, and console error. Okay? You will see I'm going to use it for, exa for examples and stuff like that as we're going to go through the semester. But if you see things are getting printed on that, don't freak out. It's just uh, three objects. Uh, so if one of them goes down, you can use the other one to convey a message somehow. Are we good? All right. Uh, we talked about C in. We said C in is pretty shy object, and we said if something goes wrong with C in, C in fails, and when it fails, it won't respond, it won't act anymore until you apologize. And we said what we do, we use that for a, a to our advantage, and we start uh, using it to detect uh, user problems. So if you ask for any particular type and using the extraction operator, you want to read that. If extraction operator is not successful, converting that user entry on console to the type you want, then CN is going to fail. And when CN fails, it goes to a fail state, and you can detect that, tell what's going on, clear the status in CN, uh, ignore whatever garbage user entered, and then try again until user comes to its senses and enters something proper. Other than that, you won't let the user go. We use that uh, methodology for everything. Like for example, in here, if I have C, C, C string over here, I'm receiving a C string. <clears throat> I'm, receiving, uh, I'm doing a get line, and I'm saying that's the maximum line, uh, number of characters that I want to get. So 
what I would do with this get CSDR over here is to actually uh, uh, put address of uh, um, uh, a character array over here and say this is the link that I want. One of the methods of C in is get line, and I ask you to please go and read the rest of them too. So get line reads number of characters until it reaches the delimiter, and delimiter for get line by default is new line. You can change it to whatever you want and use that, that one to your advantage to read stuff like comma-separated values and things like that if you want to. So by default, it stops at backslash n, but the last argument that is by default backslash n can be changed to other things. Uh, we have another method in CN that we did not talk about. That's get. Get has many different shapes. If you don't use it, so just to bring that up, let's say, for example, if I want to have a function and I call that function yes, I want to see if people are going to tell yes or no to something. So I want to have a function called yes. Okay, if I want to do that, that function is going to be Boolean, yes, correct? That's what it is. And I want this function to return true if user enters Y or whatever, okay? Um, we could uh, add a prompt to it or whatever. I'm not going to do that. We're just going to do it. Go, go easy for now. So yes just works like this. So I'm going to have over here character um, the response, whatever the user is going to enter. And I'm going to have another one over here. I'm going to call it uh, character new line. That has to be guaranteed that is new line. Otherwise, I have to stop. OK, so what do I do? I read. I want to read one character. Reading one character can be done in many different ways. Number one, uh, you can use the get method of C in. You can say yes, uh, sorry. A response is equal to ch, uh, sorry, cn dot get. That's one way. That returns a character and puts it in res. But what it returns is actually an integer. It's not a character. Okay, I'll tell you, and later on you'll find out that uh, the character that you actually return is, uh, it needs to be an integer, not a character, because not everything is printable. Like if you want pressing F1 key on your keyboard. What is the ASCII code for that? There is no ASCII code for that. Because of that, they return an integer, and that has a different code mode. We don't want to go in there. That's why usually functions returning values, returning characters, they return an integer in case the code is bigger than a character for ASCII stuff. So that's one way to get it. Another way of getting it is to use the second version of get. So I can either do this, or I can or I can say res, uh, sorry, cn.get, and I put res over here. So another version of get receives a reference of a character this time, not an integer. Okay? So what happens, it actually sets the value of res to what it returns. The difference is that cn over here returns an integer. There is no way for you in one shot to see if it failed or not. But with this one, you can. So this get actually returns the C in itself, OK? It returns the owner, like the extraction operator. So you can actually put this one in an if statement and see if that get failed or not by simply putting this. Because it returns C in, you can actually say dot fail after this. So you can have something like if, and then you can put over here dot fail. Why? Because first it tries to get it, and then it returns C in. So the whole thing is replaced by C in, and then you have fail. OK? So you can do stuff like that. And you'll see it's going to come handy very, 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 very soon. OK? For us at the moment, you're going to say, hey, what the heck? How can a reading a character fail? I mean, like, they can enter anything. It's a character, right? Uh, you will see that we're going to need that later. But either of these two will do. So that's that one. So I'm going to put that thing at the top and use this one. So let's see how do we actually do the yes thingy. OK, 
I want to make sure that user only enters or either Y or N, right? So that's for yes or no. We, we don't want anything else to be entered. And when the user enters that, so when user enters one thing, what happens? Hello? User enters a character and hits enter, right? So essentially, <laughs> essentially, uh, it has, the next character must be a new line, right? Unless something is wrong. So because I don't know what I'm going to do, and seriously, whenever I program this, I don't remember how I did it last time. So if you look at the last one that I created, maybe a different thing. But when I cannot make up my mind what conditions I am supposed to take, I'm going to go a Boolean uh, OK in here, and I'm gonna, uh, or Boolean Done. I always do that, and I say False. OK? Then I make my life easy. I'm going to say do, and then in here I'm going to say while not done. Now inside my loop, I can decide if it's done or not. <laughs> if it's done, I'll set the done to true, I come out. If it's not, so I don't have to think of what, what kind of a condition I have to put in there. So that makes your life a little easier. The kind of, uh, that type of procrastination is actually pretty good. Like when, when you when you write a code like that, you make it, I'm going to do that later. You just write something so you can decide later. Yeah, that, that's very helpful. You prefer that or this? <laughs> okay, let me just put this because it's kind of in your face. Okay, all right. So what do I do? Um, I'm going to get another one. I'm going to say new line is equal to uh, seeing that yet again, right? Because they, first of all, they have to enter one character. It cannot be two. We know that, right? So the very first thing that I need to do over here is to see if that new line thingy over here is actually a new line or not, right? It's the crappiest code I've ever written. I know after it's finished, you can make it much better, but I'm just, you know. So in here, the very first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to say if new line is not equal to new line, there's a reason behind all this nonsense programming in here. If, so the, the, what I have to do over here, I have to say see out, hey, um, uh, what do I say? I'm going to say only Actually, it doesn't make any difference if C line is not, if, and res is the same, because the message over here is going to be only Y or N, please, right? But if they put a wrong thing, that's only Y or N, too. So the condition for all of them is the same. So let's actually put the whole thing. So if new line is not equal to backslash N, um, the, the very first thing I need to do over here is... Uh, do uh, c in dot ignore. Why am I putting 12,000? I have no idea. Okay, something like that. So I'm, I just have to eat all the garbage they put over there, right? And what else I need to do? Okay, so that's that one. If it's not equal to new line, I'm just ignoring, and all right. For the error message, I'm going to use a lazy evaluation, and here I'm going to say and c out only, or I'm going to say yes. No only, please, retry. Something like that, right? OK, so that's my error message. So if done is false, so if, this, if done is true over here, not done becomes false, right? False and anything is false. So it's not going to do the C out because it knows it's false. Lazy evaluation, IPC 144, are we all okay with it? Who doesn't, who doesn't get this line? If everybody gets it, I'm going to have a quiz right now. 
<laughs> be brave. Okay, you all know? Sure, good. Anyways, so, so you know how it error message gets printed. So I'm not going to write an if statement. If, if done is false, then not done becomes true, true and, then it has to check the second part. That's why error message gets printed. So it's kind of a quick if statement. So if it's not backslash n, I'm going to do that. So the only way that, and in here else, I'm going to say else. So if it is backslash n, it means I'm a good thing. I have to see if res is equal to y uh, or, and I keep going, right? John is true. Correct? Are you okay? The only thing I need to decide how to return true or false based on the thing. Are we okay with this logic? I don't know if I actually wrote it right. So please walk through it, everyone. So what do I so say user comes in and enters A B C D. So it's A, B, C, D. A is red, B, C, D stays in a keyboard, B goes into new line, it's not new line, then it's going to ignore everything up to new line, it's cleaned up, else is not going to happen, done rem remains false, comes over here, not false, print the error message, goes back up, right, and tries again, and it's cleared. Now let's say it enters, the, the user enters uh, A and hits enter. If it's A, so res becomes A, this becomes new line, so this is good. So this is true, it comes to else. If it's neither of these, right? So done remains false. It comes over here, prints the error message, comes back up. Now user enters Y and hits enter. This becomes Y, this is new line, comes over here. It is Y done, comes out. Now I have to return true or false. I don't, th I, don't th I don't think I need a result in here at all. That result thing, not result. Uh, that's response actually, not result. Why did I, okay. Res, let me fix that. Uh, you know it's response, right? If that's response. So in here I'm gonna say return response being equal to y, y, or response being equal to lowercase y. Right? Are we okay with this? You okay with this? So if we get out of done, it means res is either y or n. So this condition becomes true. It's, it's either capital Y or lowercase y, right? So it's going to return true, otherwise it's going to return false, right? Why did I go through all this now? would be a very nice workshop thing to do, to just show you how much awful stuff you have to put up with just to be able to force the damn person sitting over there into a Y or N. User interfaces are very costly. Uh, like usually your business logic is, what, 30% of the work and 70% is to deal with that stupid user sitting at the thing to, to see if they're going to write insane stuff. So don't get disappointed if you are wasting so much time. That's just reality of life, okay? User interfaces are very costly, very costly. Anyway, so now I have a yes. I haven't tested it. Please test it, make sure everything is good. Uh, we can always add features to these things. Like, for example, I can put something like over here, like constant character pointer prompt. I can do that. And I, by default, I can set it to null pointer null PTR, and before I do anything, I can say, I can say, if prompt exists, see out, see out prompt, to make it neater. So it's like, give it options. So if they don't leave anything, it's gonna put, they can actually put a prompt in it so they don't have to do all the stuff. So it just makes the life easier. So, and, and you never put default value for for arguments inside the definition of a function. So I remove that and I'll put it in the prototype. 
that's better. Now I have a yes that I can actually deal with over here. Are we okay with this? All right. Another thing that get does is exactly like get line, okay? Another thing that get does is exactly like get line. So the signature is exactly like get line, but the difference is that it doesn't have the line, okay? The difference between, there are two difference, major differences between get line and get. Get line fails if it doesn't reach the delimiter. Get will not. Okay, so if get, if you say read 20 and comma with get, if get reaches 20 and doesn't hit the delimiter, it just stops and life is beautiful. There's nothing wrong with it. It's read 20 things and that's all. Okay, but with get line, it puts the C in in a fail state. So if delimiter, reaching the delimiter is important, get line is your friend. If it's not important, get is your friend. Numero dos. Number two. Get line eats the delimiter, get doesn't. So if get line hits the delimiter, it throws it away. It's not in the buffer anymore. But if get, if get reaches the delimiter, it will not eat it. It will stop, but the limiter remains in the, in the keyboard. Just keep that in mind, okay? So, and I'm not going to write it over here. You have it in the notes. Please go read the notes, okay? I'm just mentioning it to you. So, for example, Did we do dynamic reading in any of our workshops? Like user, no, we didn't. Um, say, um, say I want to, I don't know how many characters user wants to enter, okay? Let's say I do not know how many characters user want to enter. And I want to read it, but I want to be exa have exactly, ha have memory exactly set to the number of variables user enters. Like user wants to enter the name, I want to get that from console and exactly have that much memory allocated for it. That's very difficult, isn't it? So what can I do with that? First of all, I have to design the function for it. So the get string that I have is pretty okay, so I'm gonna use that one. I'm gonna say void get c string, but this one is gonna be dynamic. So in here, I'm gonna say character pointer reference str why because now i have to set the dynamic thing back i have to set the pointer to the dynamic memory allocation in here in here you're telling me that's the table put the coffee on it okay in this one it says which table i put the coffee on so you have to set the pointer to something Remember, pointers are passed by value. They are not passed by address. They are regular variables. When I say character pointer str, it's like saying integer str or integer a. The value is passed in. Nothing comes back. With this one, I'm returning a reference of a character pointer. Therefore, I can send the value back if I want to. Make str point something. And I don't need to set a size for it because I want to be at any size, okay? What I can do over here is to uh, return a Boolean to see if it was successful or not, because that's important. We need to know if it can actually read the information or not, or it fails. So writing something like that. So again, this is a quick review. And then, because I had time, I'm doing this. So we go through it. So now I have to get something from console. So this is to read something from console. How big of information people can enter in console? 4,000 characters? Not, not that much, right? It's impossible. 2,000 characters? So let's say, let's say, let's saddle 4,000, okay? So, so to, to be able to make it changeable, what I will do over here, I can actually go to utils over here, and in utils, I can actually create a constant uh, uh, size. What did I do? Where did I go? Uh, 
How did it change? Okay. Anyways, size t uh, max max dynamic read. Okay, something like that. And I put it to 1024. Okay, something like that. And I'm going to set it. So that becomes a constant thing that I can use for things that I want. Okay? So that's the max dynamic thing. I'm going to come down over here. And in my function, I'm going to say character, let's call it buffer. And I'll put the value in it, maximum dynamic read. That's the maximum that I want to get. If it's more than that, it's going to fail. Easy breezy, right? So what do I do? Now I can actually use my get line in here. I can say cn.get line into buffer to max dynamic read, max dynamic read, right? And I know it's going to fail if it goes too much, right? So what I'm going to do in here, in here, uh, what I'm going to do in here is this. I'm going to say, uh, first, I'm going to, uh, as soon as I come in, okay, um, because it's a dynamic thing, I'm going to set that thing to an all PTR. It's the user's responsibility to make sure it doesn't point to anything, not mine. You follow? It's not my responsibility. It's their responsibility. They should have thought about these things, right? I'm just thinking of other designs. Don't worry. But anyways, we can change it later on. So, okay. So, so, so what happens over here, um, I'm going to first set that str to null to make sure that if things go wrong, it remains null. That's, that's what I do. Number two. Now I'm going to say if cin was actually successful, it means life is good. Let's do something, right? So to do that, what do I do? Just a second. Oh, that's it? OK, I can't look at that. So the very first thing I need to do over here is to, uh, so if it's successful, it means I read that the size is good. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to say uh, I have to do a, a, a memory allocation and all the good stuff, right? But I don't want to include standard input output stuff. I, I hate that. Uh, so I'm going to actually bring my own string copy and my own SDR len. I don't want to deal with uh, uh, the, the one that comes with uh, string header file. So I'm just going to come right in here and bring my string length in here. I'm going to make it part of utils. Okay. Let's go to utils over here and add the prototype for those guys. So that's that. And that's that. There we go. So now I have a string copy and SDR len. I don't want to use C string thingy, okay? So I'm going to come back over here. Now I have SDR len and SDR uh, copy. Uh, I'm going to continue uh, coding my, uh, my thing in here. Where is it? Where am I? Where am I? Where am I? Yeah. So now I'm going to say SDR is set to new character uh, just to put an emphasis on Hey, I am using my own C, uh, SDR uh, len, not the systems. I'm going to say this SDR len, OK? And I'm going to put off there, plus 1, right? Got it? This is one of the good things about this. If you don't put it, it's not going to make a mistake. Don't, don't worry, because SDR len is part of utils. It's even if you include string header file, it says, hey, it has nothing to do with that. This is in the this is the one that you have in this class. I'm gonna use this one. It shadows the other one. But this this thingy that we talked about tells to everyone that this SDR len belongs to me, not C string. Don't worry about it. 
Okay. Now that it's done, now I'm going to say this SDR copy into uh, SDR, the buff, right? Correct? Everything copied, life is beautiful, everything's good, right? Well, what happens if C in fails? What happens if C in fails? If C in fails, okay, if C in fails, don't do stuff that other people need to do, which means don't clear C in. They need to know. And because it is working with C in, you can let it be, remain in, in, uh, in fail state. If you don't want to, you have to document it. So in, in this case, I am going to clear the C in, but I'm going to document it. So in here, I'm going to say C in dot clear. It means it failed, right? It, and C in dot ignore, because definitely it didn't reach the thing. So ignore, OK? OK, so that's that. What else we need to do? In here, I'm going to say return not not SDR. OK? That's true or false. Because if this is true, not true becomes false, not false becomes true. So if I put not not whatever the value I have, it turns to Boolean. Or I can make it C++, that's C. Or I can write something like this. Bool. So cast that pointer to a Boolean. You can do that too. It means if it's false, return it means if it remains null. Now I have written a function. Oh, did I? Yeah, now I've written, actually, yeah, now I've written a function that reads from keyboard the exact same size that user enters. But this has to get documented. You have to document it to actually mention that dynamically allocate so it's responsibility of the user. So you have to mention over here, write something over here that uh, dynamically reads from uh, a console or from CN, from iStream, uh, from CN actually, not iStream, from CN, um, uh, reads from CN, uh, must be uh, str must be deleted before and after usage. Something like that. So this is, uh, I'm going to say, points to uh, um, dynamic value entered from user and return success. OK, something like that. So when they actually hover over it, they can actually see that it dynamically. So SDR points to yada, yada, and returns success. So uh, you'll be called. Are we OK with this? I think we are done with the input and output thingy. I gave you all the examples that I could. Now you can actually do your own stuff from now on, OK? There are ways to remove this max dynamic read, you have enough knowledge to do it now. With what, we, what you know, you can actually, so what you can do if this thing failed, you can even make this dynamic, and if it fails, resize it, continue reading because it failed, right, and it stops at that thing. And then keep going get line in a loop and resizing the memory and make the memory bigger so you don't have any limit. You can read as much as you want. Your choice. If you want to do it, it's a very good challenge to remove this limitation. See if you can do it. So what you need to do, the buffer itself has to get be dynamic. And if get line fails, watch it, it has to be in a loop. If, if, if it fails, you resize the memory, you make it bigger, and you do get line again. Again. And you keep doing that until it doesn't fail anymore. And then at the end, you resize the memory. You do the dynamic thing at the end again, and you delete the buff. 
Anyways, are we good? So input output done. Um, now let's talk about uh, uh, constructors and destructors and the current uh, object. The current object, this thingy, you have seen it. I have used it many times. But um, um, it really doesn't come in handy until we go to operator overloading instead, right? So for now, uh, I may, if I find, you just, you just know the fact at the moment that this is a pointer that points to the object in which you are in, in whatever object you're in. That's, that's the thing. Okay, and uh, you recall that we made this utils uh, uh, global, uh, which means ut is everywhere. So you can add all the string functionality, string uh, header file functionalities manually yourself over here, and don't even use string header file. Just use your own utils and do ut dot string compare, ut dot strlen, ut dot string copy. You can write all the code yourself so you don't use string header file. Questions? Yes. Because it gives you a warning. It says it's unsafe. You have to put that ugly thing at the top that says define CRT no secure warning. And because we are a geek, we want to do things ourselves. You have to always, if, if, you, if you keep it easy, then you're going to remain an easy programmer. Okay? You're going to be those people who are always, other, those people who, design their own C string, will take over, <laughs> okay? Uh, I, um, why do you go to the gym and do 250 pound bench presses? Why do you do that? Because you gotta pick up 250 pounds every day? No, so when you pick up 100 pounds, you do it comfortably, right? That's what it is. So when I give you challenges like this, why do we do this? because we can and our brain's gonna get stronger. So when similar things come and we don't have access to it, we can do it. And that's actually a very good question. Those are the things that students always ask, like oh, why do you rewrite thing when I have it over there? And which brings us to the next thing I'm gonna create right now. Any questions down to this point? Suggestions? That's what you do all the time, don't you? When you read something from, from the keyboard, how do you know what is the size of the name of the person? Wouldn't it be nice to fit it exactly to what you want? If you have three, five million records and you want to keep people's name in it, if you want to use 60 characters for the name, and my name is Li Lo, that's five characters. So you're wasting 55 characters because of those five characters. And that's most of the cases. So with five million, five million multiplied by wasted stuff, how much memory you are losing? It's better to always have dynamic memory allocation. Always, always, always. There's no question about it. Questions? Suggestions? Yes. Oh, yeah. The reason is that if I teach it now, and I show you an example for it, it is an example that doesn't make sense. But when the time comes and you feel the need for it, and I use it in my code, you've got to say, aha. For now, just remember, this is the pointer to the current object. Target of this is the reference of the current object. Done. That's all you need to know for now. This is the pointer to the current object. So if you have an array of employee and you have, if you have three employees, A, B, C, when A dot print is called, if you use this, that print means A. If B dot print is called, the this inside print means B. It refers to the owner, the one, the object there. And if you use target of this, obviously that becomes uh, the reference. So if you need the reference, target of this. How do we write target of this? How do we write target of pointer? 
star. Ampersand is address of my dear. I know. Nice try. <laughs> it's too early in the morning. <laughs> yeah, so to, to get the reference uh, of a pointer, you put target of, which is asterisk. Okay? But this by itself is a pointer, so to make it a reference, you put an asterisk beside it. Just keep that in mind. When the time comes, we'll know. Again, what, when I'm teaching, it's a mixture of things that I'm going to teach over here. So you're going to see um, I, I suddenly jump into operator overloading. That is the next week's thing. Okay, So get ready for it. Things are going to come. So again, uh, we are in here, and then we're going to be there. One of the problems with C language is that they say you don't have a variable to hold the name in. We have to jump through hoops and create arrays and track null termination and things like that. I'll say, the heck with it. I'm going to make a variable. I have C++. What do I make? What do I call that variable? I'm going to call it a string. OK? Or let's call it my string. I don't want it to be confused with the string of C++. So let's do that. If I want to create a class that represents a string, and does everything a string do, what do I do? How do I do that? How do I create it? How do I actually make it? Obviously, the first versions that I'm going to create is going to suck. But as I keep going through it, you're going to see it gets better and better. And at the end, when I'm done with it, it literally becomes like a variable. So you can say string name. Then you can say C in name. And it literally reads dynamically into the name for you automatically. And you can say C out name, and it prints it for you. And you can compare two names as if they are variables. You can say if name, two equal signs, another name, it tells you if they are the same or not. Greater than, less than, everything that you do to a regular variable, we want to make it to work for a string. So I want to create that. First, I need a class. As I do that, I'm going to continue using my utils. You can freely use my utils in your workshops because you can submit a utils thingy with your workshop. You know that, right? So all the things that I do over here, you can freely use it. If you be kind enough to let me know that you use it, you don't have to cite it because it's your teachers. Obviously, you can use your teacher's material. If you can, that's fun, right? But if you have used mine, I would like to know. But if it's custom made yours, um, then you don't need to. If you mentioned it that it's mine, I, I appreciate it. And if you don't, it doesn't matter. It's just statistically, I want to know. Let's put it that way. So I'm going to add a class. And I'm going to call that my string. Or my, S, my str. My, is my str OK? Because I. Because C++ has this already, called string with lowercase, S-T-R-I-N-G. If you write string A, it, it's like a variable. You can work with it. We are not allowed to use it this semester. We're going to use it in 3, 4, 5. OK? But well, we want to create that. So I'm going to call it my str. OK? It's exactly like your string header file, my friend. We are creating it so when we are using it, we appreciate what it is. So I've got to call it my str. OK? I never called it this. I always called it string with capital S. Today, this, this you see is different. So I prepare my thing, if not defined, um, uh, Seneca, my S-T-R-H, right? That, that's what we do. And then we're going to have over here define. And we're going to write namespace Seneca. And I'm going to have this thing in here. So that's my string. And then we're going to go in here and create namespace Seneca. And I'm ready to code now. Are we OK with this, people? And also, this one is, so I'm going to save that. I'm going to call it, what do I call it? A uh, utils tester.cpp. 
Yeah, that is utils tester. So now I'm going to come back in the PRG thingy that I have and let the utils. I'm, I don't know if I'm going to use the utils or not. Let it. I'm going to remove it. If I use it, I'll bring it back. Uh, so I'm going to include mystr.h. Let's create a string. So what do I do? Well, what do I have when I have a string? Like um, the very first thing that I need in a string, a string. So all the dirty stuff that we do, all the nasty stuff that we do to deal with string of characters, we do it behind the scenes so others don't have to. And that others is usually us. Okay. So what does a string have? It has character pointer data correct that's the first thing that a string has you okay with this problem no problem all right so and let's create two things over here very quickly uh, first of all um, i'm going to make sure that when it's created it follows the rules of dynamic memory allocation and when it's dead everything is done properly so what I do over here is this. The very first thing I do, I create a constructor for it. My SDR, we already know it. No, no argument constructor and a destructor. This is the very first thing you do. And we're going to create this. And uh, in the destructor, I'm going to say delete M data. Make sure there's not going to be dynamic memory all allocation problems. and uh, in the constructor, uh, I'm going to say m data is equal to null PTR. Are we okay with this? Hmm? Any problem down to this point? Then what am I going to do? I need to print this thing out. So the very, f the, I need to, uh, yeah, I need to print it out. So I'm going to do a print thingy just to test it. So I'm going to write a function over here called print. I'm going to do the awful one first. So I'm going to say print, and I'm going to put over here like that. Obviously, this is constant, which means it's not going to change. And in here, what do I do? When you print an empty string, what does it show? Nothing, right? So that's exactly what I'm doing. And if there is something in there, I print it, right? So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to say, see out m data only if m data is not null, right? And I use see out. I can actually say over here include io stream and using namespace std. Are we okay with this? All right. I'm going to test it immediately. I know it's crazy, but I'm going to test it. So in here, I'm going to do this. I'm going to come to my tester program, and in here, I'm going to say my string s, and I'm going to say s.print, and it should print nothing. <laughs> right? And program works right fantastic do this often keep doing this it's a good thing to do now the next thing I want to be able to do is this I want to be able to say my str I want to do that which brings us to the microphone Now, we talk about assignment at the moment of creation. We said assignment at the moment of creation is what? What's the difference with if I put it after? If I had 6 as my string s, and at 7 I had s is equal to hello there, 
But this, what's the difference? What is assignment at the moment of creation? Do you remember? We talked about it. No random variable. There's no random variable, which means S is, I want the magic word. Thank you. 1% for midterm. Okay? So, initialized. Okay? It is initialized. Initialization, what does it mean? We said how we can write initialization. I, wrote, I showed you three different ways to initialize things. Remember, I told you you can write, you can write integer, num, integer num is equal to zero, or you, can write, or you can write integer num zero, remember? Or you can write integer num zero. We said they're all the same, right? Okay, that gives you a message. What is the message? You're actually passing a value to the constructor. So you had no argument constructor. Good news, now I'm gonna have one argument constructor. One argument constructor is this. So assignment at the moment of creation is not an assignment. It is an initialization. And which procedure initializes the object? Constructor, right? So that's what we're going to do. So now, if I create a one argument constructor, mission is accomplished. I simply come over here and create my one argument constructor. How do I create my one argument constructor? This is what I do. My str, and in here I'm going to say constant character pointer uh, C string. I specifically put C string or C string, okay, to to, for everybody knows that this is a C string that is coming in, not a character pointer. Are we good, Dan, for this point? Now I'm going to create it. So when I'm here, you don't need to call it C string. You can call it, I don't know, CSDR, something like that. The name of the prototype and this has nothing to do with each other. That's why in your prototypes you put huge names. If for your variables. I know you've seen some, some books and profs that they don't put any names for their prototypes. They, so they actually create the prototypes like that. When they write a prototype, they do it like this. That works too because you only are introducing what it is. So compiler only needs to know what the type is. But what a waste of opportunity. Who knows what is that? Put a name for it and put a big one. So people, it's like a Nice little comment that you're putting over there. It is ignored by the compiler, I know. But let's use it so when somebody looks at our class, they're not going to go, huh? They're going to look at it and say, oh, yeah, that makes sense. It's uh, setting my string to something. And we know exactly how to do it. So now in here, I need my utils, actually. So I'm going to include utils. No, utils. Now. What do I do? I'm going to say uh, M data will be set to, oh, first of all, I'm going to say if CSTR, I'm not going to waste my time, right? If, the, if, I, if I received anything, if they put null over there, I don't want to do anything, right? So if I got anything, so if I got anything, and that actually creates a bug, but we're going to go through it. So M data, M data. And then what do I do? I'm going to say mData is equal to new character. And what do I do? I'm going to put ut.str uh, len of CSTR. CSTR plus one. Right? I do str len and I allocate memory. Now I'm going to say ut.str copy into mdata the value of csdr, right? Dynamic memory allocation. There you go. Now I have my thing, but there is a problem in here. If csdr is null, what's going to happen? Walk through it. Let's have, the, have them both. You know that, remember I told you that too, when you're coming to this class, have coffee because I have a class five minutes after three stories down. I have to, or up, I don't know. 
I, I have to end the class early so you don't get a break halfway through. My apologies on that. So please have coffee. Okay. So what was I saying? Yeah. So take a look at this. If C is C, let me just uh, split the window so we can see both code. See what the problem is in here? If CSTR is not null, what's going to happen? It comes in here, allocates memory to the size that it's supposed to, puts it in data, right? We could make it safe, make sure that this is successful. So we're going to say if mdata do the, the string copy, no problem, we can do that. And that's our string copy. We can actually make it safe in there too. I can change the code so only copying happens when this is not null. Not, not. I can do that so it doesn't fail, it becomes safe. No problem with that. So what I wanted to say was, uh, what happens if SDR is null? This doesn't happen, right? What's going to be the value of M data? See, null is wishful thinking. It's what you like it to be. Turn your intelligence to off. Dumb as a doorknob, then walk through. I like it to be null, like, you know what I mean? I, I, they gave me a plate, I like it to be clean, to eat in it, but I'm gonna look hard <laughs> to make sure it really is, or maybe you uh, wipe it first, just to make sure. It's the same thing, so that, let's not do wishful thinking, it's not gonna be null. How to actually set it null? You just set it null before you start, it's gonna initialize it, right? So I'm gonna say m data is set to null PTR, right? And I have to keep doing that, right? So probably it would be a nice thing to have a method over here called set empty that is private and keep calling that in case there are other stuff that I want to set. We could do that, but for now I'm just going to leave it like this. I don't want to make it too complicated. But now it first makes the M data null, then it tries to set it. If it sets it, null is overwritten, life is good. If not, that one is null. Are we okay? It's going to be the value of C string because it's going to measure the size allocated. Maybe you can't see this thing, can you? <laughs> okay, let's do it like this. There we go. So if this is not null, first it's going to set it to null, so data becomes null. This is not null. It comes inside because now it's true. It's not null. It it's measures the size, allocates enough memory, and then copies the data from here to there. So your string will take the data like that. So now, in this CPP of mine, if I say hello there over there, and I actually print it, what I'm going to have will be hello there. You see, so I'm getting closer. So it's getting, it becomes more like a variable now. I can actually set it to something and print it out. Are you okay with this? All right. What if I need to have a limit for it? What if I want to make sure that name is not greater than certain value, and then it goes off to that one? Like, what if I say, okay, uh, when, when somebody sets it, I don't want it to get bigger than 70 characters. I want it to be truncated. Okay? How do I do that? So for that, what I need to do is something like this. First of all, I'm going to add another string copy to my, uh, to my uh, utilities. So another string copy. But this is... Unlike C language that I have to say SDRN copy, I'm in C++, I can overload. So I have a string copy that actually accepts a length. What it does, it does the copy exactly like the other one, but it checks for the length too. If it reaches the length, it stops. So that makes sure that the, it goes up to a certain amount. And unlike SDRN copy that doesn't null terminate, mine does. So it's a safe one. I don't need to say anything afterwards. So I know. We can, we can um, please, if you are using this, so let's, let's change the rule for, for using my utils. Use my utils, but you have to comment everything <laughs> to make sure you understand what it does. So 
So let's put this one over here. So that's that one. So that string copy copies, but up to certain length. So now I can actually create another constructor. So constructors like functions can be overloaded. There is no problem with that. Okay, so I can actually create another my string over here exactly like this one that has a size t max len. So it means that's, it's going to truncate it. If it's more, bigger than that, it's going to stop it and make it short. So now if I create that, I'm going to say if, first of all, first of all, what I'm going to do, I'm going to check to see if it's null or not, because that's the golden rule, right? So m data is equal to null PTR. And then in here, I'm going to say if CSTR, if it exists, I'm going to say if uh, ut.strlen of CSTR is less than max len, then it's just, the, just like the other one, right? Right? So I'm going to call that constructor. I'm going to say my str, and in here I'm going to put csdr. Are we okay with this? Everybody's okay with this? Didn't I tell you you cannot call a constructor? I shouted off my lawn. I just did it, and everybody said it's okay. You cannot call a constructor. It's not a function. Minus one for the first. No, I'm not going to do that. But, <laughs> but please be careful. The things that I say, I really mean it. You cannot call a constructor here. You know what happens when this happens? You see, it's not even giving me an error. At line 10, it's going to create a my string. Nameless, because there is no name for this. Out of that string, and it's going to die immediately before it reaches the right 11. It's like a flash of light, poof, and gone. Nothing is set. You cannot call a constructor, people. Please be careful. Okay, extremely important. You cannot call a constructor. Okay, and that's actually a bad logic that I've written over. All right, are we okay? Now, let's actually write the proper code. So in here, I'm going to say m data is equal to new character. In here, I'm going to say, uh, what do I do? I'm going to say ut. So not to call a function twice, I'm going to write over here size t. Uh, did I? I'm using integer for for SDR len. I'm a bad person. That's size t. I don't know why I did that. My apologies. I'm just going to fix it. And this one too. And this one too. Are we okay? Yeah, let me go over here. Yeah, I'm sorry because I just noticed that that's int. Okay, because we already talked about size t, we know what they are. So are we okay here? I Hopefully we are. Okay, so let's go back. So in here I'm going to say now, I have to decide. So in here I'm going to say size t len is ut dot uh, str len of c string. Okay, so I want to know what is the length of the string because I have to do it twice. I don't want to recall a function. It makes it slow. And I have lots of memories. OK, I, I, I'm going to use a local variable with this. So I'm going to say, uh, if len is less than, uh, if len, if, uh, yeah, if the str len, so len is the, the, the string length that we have is less than max len, OK, then it's the length I want. Otherwise. I need max len, right? Uh, 
Is that okay? I think we're good, right? And then after this, I'm going to do a plus one. So this tells me if the len is smaller than len, use the len. Otherwise, give me the max len, then do plus one. So that does the copying for me. And now I'm going to go ut.sdr copy into mdata from c string up to len, up to max len. Right? So if it's smaller than max len, it's going to copy that much. But if it's max len, then it's going to stop and make it known. So there you go. Now I have my string set up for two. So you can have multiple uh, constructors for a class to do whatever you want to do. So now in here, I can say in this program, whoops, what did I do? Uh, Control Z, sorry about that. So I'm going to have T over here. But for that, then you cannot use assignment anymore, <laughs> right? Because it's two now. So now I have to do either this or this. It doesn't make any difference. So I'm going to say hello there. And over here, I'm going to go say uh, five. And I'm going to say t.print. So now I have two different ones, two different constructors. Still there's why? My STR, my size STR, it says, what? Let's see, what did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? Let me compile it step by step and see what does it say. So let's first do utils, compile. Looks good. Compile. Looks good. Compile. Are you kidding me? OK. <laughs> Character, you had a SDR copy, unsigned, you had a, you had a, oh, wait, wait, wait. Did I change it in the, yeah, it says it's, it cannot recognize this. Did I? Don't I have that one up there? Aren't these two identical people? X? Any difference between these two? Am I? Oh, shoot. Stupid compiler. OK. I forgot the utils. Thank you. Thank you. OK, so anyways. So as you see, the first one says hello there. The other one just says hello because it's cut to five. So I can now do that. So that's constructors, people. You can set as many as you want and do whatever you want. Are we OK down at this point? OK. Now I'm going to commit over here before I teach you something else, OK? Now why I do that so you can compare the code and see what did I do differently. So I'm going to go to. Um, I'm going to go to uh, op244. No, it's there. It is. So I'm going to commit over here saying NAA constructors before. and push. All right. So why I did that? Because I want to add one thing over here that is very important. Any more people want to take a break? Should I give you a five minutes break? Anyone? You came late. Want to go early too? <laughs> 
joking. That's okay. So, yes. Wait, 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 wait. He had a question first. Let me ask. The bug. Go ahead. Uh, this might sound. Uh, no. What? What's basic definition of constructors and what's how is it different from classes again? How, how a constructor is different with a class? They have nothing to do with each other. Constructor builds a class. Constructor is an automatic procedure that is called when a class is created. It helps you, uh, it's actually a very valid question. It, uh, it helps you uh, set the class to whatever you want when it's being created. It's not a function. It looks like a function. That's why I screamed like that. You cannot call a constructor because it's not a, and that's all. So when you create these, forget about these. So when you create a constructor, when you create a constructor, you put the same name as the name of the class as you see, OK? So you are essentially saying, when this is created with these two, do such and such. It's not a function. It tells you what happens when an object is built. So I built an object with one thing. One argument constructor is called. I build the object with two things. Two argument constructor is called. I build it with nothing. The one with no argument will be called. And obviously, nothing's going to get printed empty. OK, what am I doing? Dot no, print. We good? My lady? No, in main, we are requesting the creation in a certain way. We have to understand. That's why I always say, realize what is the difference between initialization and setting. There are two different beasts. You have a question? Go ahead. How much you make the constructor uh, overload? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Very common. You build some in many different ways. Yes. Does concept uh, have to be present? That's a very high-tech question. Too rich for our blood. <laughs> so if so, so 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 let's put it in private and see what happens. What does it say? You don't have access to it. You don't have access to build it. OK, now you ask the question, get ready for the answer. Yes, we do have private constructors. IO stream has one. You cannot instantiate IO stream. But somehow they did it. C out is an instance of I stream. Try to instantiate it, see what happens. You cannot. So, and also, this can, this can enforce ownership. Later on, we're going to learn how we can make a class owner of another one. Let's say you want to create a class for an array. Array has elements, right? Is it possible to have an element of an array without an array? No. An element of an array should only get created when you create an array, right? So it's only array that is allowed to instantiate element and no one else. In that case, you make the constructor of element private and make the array owner. So only owner is allowed to create it. How? We'll know it in, late, in future days. Just be aware of it. Did I answer the question, hopefully? Okay. All right. No, it wasn't here. Where, where was I? I was here. In terms of OK, so now <clears throat> I want to introduce you to a place called initialization area. Initialization area. What is initialization area? It's a place in which you can initialize properties of a class. 
in here, I am not initializing data. I am setting data, which means between line six and seven, data has garbage in it, correct? In here, I'm not initializing data, right? So how can I do that? How can I initialize the data inside the constructor and not set it? You put it in the initialization area. If you Google initialization area, nothing comes up. It's my own words. I built it. Okay, because it, it just makes sense. So don't go Google initialization. So what the heck is that? Okay, initialization area is this area. The area between, in the implementation of the constructor, between the close parentheses and open curly bracket. Anything you do in here is considered initialization. You are essentially saying, before you do the construction, do that. Okay? So how do I do that? So now, this M data, I want to do it over there. I, I'm going to bring it over here and put a column. And I'll go M data null PTR. So now, M data is initialized to null. It, in no point of time, it will have null in it. I'm going to do it over here, too, with a different syntax. So in here, if I want to do that, I'll put it in the initialization area. And I'm going to say M data. I'm going to put null PTR, potatoes, potatoes. Remember, we have this is the universal way. You can do it anywhere. So line number 14 is potatoes. This one is potato. And if I come over here, I can simply do this. Same thing. M data, no PTR, and do that. Oh, not do that. I have to make it like that. Are we okay? That's 10 years ago. Then they brought in attribute initialization, which means you can actually go over here and do this, <laughs> right? Which means you're saying, make it null anyway. So you don't need to do it anyway. So if you put it over there, deep breath, relax. It's null anywhere it's created. You don't have that one, you do it in initial initialization area. On purpose, I'm not doing this because people say, why you are not teaching the latest thing? Because the code you are going to debug is not the latest thing. It's written 15 years ago. You need to know these things. Okay? So remember, well, I'm going to give you another example with that, but in here, I'm going to use the old stuff. Are we okay? All right. So, so now that I have all these things, let's deal with this print thingy. E. So print that I have over here, I can actually make it look better. Because if I want to go to new line, what do I do? If I want to go to new line in here, I have to have a C out and L, right? To go to new line. What if I wanted to do this? I wanted to say, How can I do that? Only if print return C out, right? That makes my life much easier. So instead of doing this, I'm going to go to that print thingy, and I'm going to go in here. I'm going to say, hey, instead of void return O stream, I cannot return it by value because value means construction. <laughs> So I have to return the reference. That's C out, right? Obviously, because I am in the header file, I need to have include IO stream. But remember, in header files, you're not allowed to use using. Using in header file is forbidden. You cannot say using namespace STD in a header file because it becomes hidden logic. 
because if anybody includes your header file, suddenly it's going to start using the entire namespace of STD. You don't want them. Okay, so that's why I'm saying I'm going to write it. And I'm saying you're not allowed to. So namespace STD use people do this over and over, but I'm saying do not. So in here I'm going to say do not do this. Instead, qualify every object. So you're saying I want O stream of STD. We good? Now if you are going in my SDR in here in this header file in here where we are printing over here C out, right? So this one's going to be O stream reference to match that one. And I have O stream included over there. Now at the end, I'm going to say return C out, right? So it returns the C out, Ta -da! done. So, huh. and let me make it even easier because this, this is ugly. I do see out and do it that, like that. I'm not going to do this. So in here, I'm going to say return C out. Then in here, I'm going to say if M data is not, is null, is not null, print M data, otherwise print nothing. Right? That works the same way. So I don't want to write an if statement. I want it to be one line. Right? So it's going to, now it's returning C out. And because it's returning C out, I can actually in here go and L. And I run the program, you will see that it's just going to actually go to new line for every and each of them. Right? It makes it more beautiful. Yes. And you're going to see little by little, <laughs> baby steps, we're going to go to places that we're going, we can do some nice stuff. Are we okay down to this point? Are we okay? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? All right, how much time do we have? Uh, it ends at 9.45, right? I have 40? 40. I have two minutes. <laughs> So 45, so I have, I, have, I have seven minutes. So now let's write a set function to be able to set these things. Okay, I want to set it to a value. So let's do that. So how can I actually set it? Uh, so set function, I'm going to come over here and go. So I created print. Print is not actually supposed to be like this. There is a universal, not a universal way, a standard way of writing functions that uses O stream. But for now, this is good. But in future, you'll see I'm going to slightly modify this to make it upgradable. OK? You'll see what does that mean later on. So now we have this. Now I'm going to create a set. So in here, I'm going to say void set. And in here, I'm going to put the constant character pointer C string, right? So I want to be able to halfway set, I want to set it to another thing. I don't want it to just always remain what it is. So what do I do in this set? So set kind of looks like the constructor that I have up there. Why it's not giving me? Anyways, so um, let's save this. And I'm going to come in here. And I'm going to create a set. I'm going to create a set right over here. So I'm going to say avoid my SDR set. OK? Const character pointer C string. OK. Now, this set is exactly like the constructor. I'm not going to tell you I'm going to call the constructor again because, you know, we can't, right? So, but what's the difference between this and that? The difference is that. Set may be called halfway through the lifetime. In here, because it's just being bored, I'm sure M data doesn't have anything in it, right? In here, set might actually have something in it. So I have to make sure what I do over here is exactly like this. So I am, I am literally doing what that one is doing. Right? 
Well, before this, what I'm doing is this. I'm saying, what am I saying? I'm saying uh, delete mdata. Do I need to check to see if it's null first before deleting? Maybe it's null. No, because delete has that mechanism inside. If it's null, it won't do anything. Now, set comes over here, deletes the data, and then sets it. But to make sure I'm not going to have any bug in here in case CSDR is null, I have to follow the golden rule that unused pointers are always set to null. In case this goes null, then that becomes null, so everything is set. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? Now take a look. You see that set thingy? You see this? You're exactly the same thing. So I could have actually called the set in the constructor. No problem. We could actually do this. I could actually, I could actually do this in here. Right? It comes in, it sets it to null PTR, comes in, passes the value, deletes null, who cares? Overrides null, who cares? And then sets it. Right? That's reusing code. We could have done that. We could use the set over here too, but forget it. So now that I'm setting, I can actually halfway through my program. I can say actually over here s dot set uh, a new string now, right? So I'll print it before and after. Now when I run the program, you will see that first it actually uh, creates it and it becomes it. So yeah, you can actually set it to different things. Right? Right? Are we okay? Are we okay now to this point? And here comes the moment of truth <laughs> about this. What if I want to set it and print it right away? What if I want to have this? And then new line. Okay? For print. To actually print that value, what should set return? The S, right? Set should return the S. So if I go inside set, how can I have access to reference of the current object? This. So now I can change my set over here and return actually my, my string reference. And going to set my string reference, and at the end I can say return target of me. Now set makes sense, right? You don't get it? You don't get it? Let's run it and see what happens. First, let's run it, see if it runs. Oh, it doesn't run. Uh, oh, and L. There we go. Okay. So that's the moment of truth. So let's deep breath. Let's walk through. Deep breath. Let's walk. That's what's beautiful about C++. With two lines of code, you can do magical stuff. Okay. First, I'm going to walk it through with you. Let's, let's actually get to that point. So I'm, I'm coming right to this point. So I'm at set. What is being called now? What is the function that is going to call, get called over here first? Set. So S set is called. There is no problem with that. <clears throat> I'll go inside and see what the heck is going on. Now, set is called. OK, so this CSDR is a new yada, yada, yada. First, it deletes the old one. That was hello there. I can't see you, but hopefully, OK. <laughs> OK, so it deletes that one, sets it to null. Is CSDR null? No. Creates a new memory, copies everything, and done. Are we OK? 
<coughs> now, oh, not that. Give me a second. Split the window. <coughs> Which line is being executed over here? Line 10. Whose set is being called? S, are you okay with this? So when we are in here, who is this? S. But this is the pointer to S. To make it reference, I'll make target of this. And I return the reference. So it returns S, correct? So after set is called, it will be replaced by S. Correct? That S takes over with print, gets printed. What print returns? C out. That is the next one. And it keeps going like that. Walk through it like an idiot, and you're going to know it. Don't use your intelligence. Walk through it step by step. Turn the intelligence off and go through it. Believe me, it's going to be a second to learn it. But anyway, so that's that. And we're going to stop right at that this point. Let me just. Control X it, Control Z it. So now, now that this is returned from here, goes to S's print now, as you see. So it comes over here, and now it returns C out, which is picked up for the end L that prints the new line, and so on and so forth. It's called cascading, cascading effect, which each function. From now on, remember, when you create a class, don't lose the opportunity. If you create a method and your method is void, don't return void. Always return the reference of the current object and return a star this. Don't lose this opportunity because it helps you in programming. It makes your code shorter. So whenever you see there is a function written, and even in the assignment, I tell you it returns void, don't listen. Really, return the reference of its owner, always, because it doesn't make any difference. If you don't use it, it's a reference in cyberspace. Nobody's using it. And if you use it, it makes your code much shorter. Are we OK? To be continued, all right? All right. Have yourself a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful day. I'm so sorry, that was a desperate. <laughs> okay, so uh, NAA January 5th.